threaten Mecca, organizers say earthquakes, including that record 5.8 quake that hit Pawnee, are what led them to make it a portion of that summit devoted to earthquakes. It's the kind of quake that I think geologists have been saying to expect. Just a few years ago, earthquakes 3.0 or greater were basically unheard of, but more than 900 were reported in 2015. Probably the longest eight seconds of my life when I was just barely able to stand up. Portions of the summit will take a look at earthquake insurance and what scientists believe is behind Oklahoma's rapid increase in quakes. In recent months, the Oklahoma Corporation Commission has been asking oil and gas producers to reduce injection levels or even shut in some of the wells. We commend the Corporation Commission for being so active on this issue, but it's important that we understand that people are very, very concerned about this. I am too, and it's important that we address the issues. Some of the speakers at the summit include a California earthquake expert and the director of the Oklahoma Geological Survey. Around 700 experts are expected to attend the summit. Reporting live, Kelsey Powell, KOCO 5 News. Kelsey, thank you. Let's talk weather now. Jonathan, you mentioned this to us today. The heat in Oklahoma, downright unprecedented. Unbelievable. I mean, this time of year, we should be in the 50s. We're near 100 degrees oh in goodness. one spot in Oklahoma. And it, it was a nice day. A lot of people out there and enjoying it. High of 89 for Oklahoma City. That was a record breaker for us today. Old record 82, 90 down to Lawton, 98 Altus. But you know where Mangum, Oklahoma is? It's right there. They had the highest temperature today, 99 degrees. It has never been this hot this early in the, in the year. It was unbelievable out there right now. Few clouds, 63 degrees. Winds on the south right now at 10. That will change later tonight. 73 in War Acres, 72 down in Norman. Enid, you're at 57 and then 61 over in Hobart. So tomorrow morning, not too cool. We're looking at lows in about the 40s, but look at these winds of the north at about 20 to 30 miles an hour when you wake up tomorrow morning and that north wind is going to bring the cooler air in. So when you wake up in the morning, you're going to hear those winds. Winds for tomorrow keeping us down into the 50s, but highs in the 40s as we go into the work week as rain moves in the updated forecast coming in. I'd say in about 12 minutes. OK, Jonathan, thank you. And that oppressive heat has the state reminding you that the burn ban is still in effect in 53 counties. That means no burning for two weeks. State leaders ask that even if you don't live in one of the affected counties, avoid any activity that may cause a spark. Oh, well, we got an update to breaking news for you tonight. An officer involved shooting in Bethany is now deadly. Police there confirming that James McMullen died from his injuries this morning. He was shot Friday when police say he pointed a gun at offers officers when they told him to drop it. Well, the officer whose name will be released Monday is on paid leave during this investigation. And one person is in the hospital after someone shot him. Oklahoma City Police say the victim was walking down the street this morning near Southeast 22nd and Central, but the victim refused to give police any information before IMSA took him to the hospital. Now to a continuing battle over the executive immigration order. President Donald Trump says he has no doubt he will prevail. And that despite an appeals court decision against reinstating the ban. Aixa Diaz is in Washington with what's next. The Trump administration hasn't announced its next move yet. One option is to take the case to the Supreme Court. Another is to rewrite the executive order. President Trump vows to fight on after an appeals court refused to reinstate his ban on travelers from seven Muslim majority countries. We will continue to go through the court process and ultimately I have no doubt that we'll win that particular case. In a unanimous decision, three appellate judges upheld a lower court's ruling that put a temporary hold on the president's travel ban. The Trump administration could now appeal to the Supreme Court. Four judges have now looked at this and all four have said this temporary restraining order is appropriate. So I think that the government has an uphill climb if they go to the Supreme Court. The government could also go back to district court and argue its case with more evidence, or President Trump could rewrite the executive order. This broad order covered everybody coming in from these seven countries. A narrow order that might pass constitutional muster would focus on a smaller number of individuals who the government had particular concerns about. The president's executive order is also facing legal challenges in other courts across the country, including New York and Virginia. In Washington, I'm Ike Sadias. And more action on immigration tonight. We've learned that hundreds of undocumented immigrants have been arrested in at least seven states as part of federal raids. 
first of all, they're not rounding anyone up. Um, the people that ICE uh, uh, apprehend are people who are um, illegal and then some. And immigration officials call the arrests routine, saying that many of them had prior felony convictions. They add that these were scheduled before President Trump took office and have no connection with the immigration ban. Well, new lawsuits filed after a crash that killed a young Major League Baseball star. Yeah, the families of the two other victims are seeking millions of dollars. Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez and two others died last September when their boat crashed into a jetty of rocks in Miami. Well, the families are seeking $2 million, but authorities say Fernandez had cocaine and alcohol in his system at the time. His family's attorney says he expects to find that Fernandez was not driving the boat. Well, now to a terrifying scene caught on camera. An AT&T store robbed at gunpoint. The video coming out of Houston where the suspects not trying to cover their faces at all as they pointed the gun, then directed the two employees to the back where there is a large safe. Well, that safe is then open. They grab boxes and new phones and tables, then cash. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. More dramatic video tonight. A 68 year old Idaho man trapped in his home because of floodwaters. Rescue crews found him in freezing cold chest high water. They put him in a device that hoisted him into a helicopter. He was in poor health, so he was checked out by paramedics. His condition hasn't been released. Well, imagine you drive to the airport and it is so bad. You got to ditch your car just to make your flight. Well, that was a reality for some travelers in the Northeast. Some seen hopping fences and walls with suitcases. Heading over to New York's LaGuardia Airport, they are weaving through snow, brake lights just to get to the gate. Well, passengers say this is as bad as they have ever seen it. I've never seen it like this. It's completely insane. Never. Usually it's bad, but this is about as bad as I've seen it. Yeah, it appears that a huge construction project along with flights canceled by winter weather is to blame here. And the airport says it has more police on the ground trying to keep things moving. Well, great news for firefighters in Guthrie. They have they're refilled with supplies thanks to an outpouring from Oklahomans. And we told you about this last night about Guthrie fire crews running low on water and Gatorade thanks to a busy fire season. Well, staff put a Facebook post saying they have since been overwhelmed with water and sport drinks donations. Well, in the hours leading up to tonight's Thunder game, it was no shortage of opinions of how this game was going to end up. Yeah, that's the truth. Well, KSU's Kelsey Powell heard from fans themselves just ahead of the battle. Tonight, the crowds definitely came out for the Thunder's most anticipated game of the season. Whether you are a Golden State fan or a Thunder fan, the excitement levels were high. Came out that this is the day. This is Oklahoma City's time to shine. I'm pretty pumped. I hope the Warriors show up. There were no shortage of cupcake signs, shirts, and even a person dressed up as a cupcake walking around. It all referenced Kevin Durant being called a softie by fans for leaving the Thunder. I am so excited. <laughs> we have been waiting since July 4th. This game marks the third time this season that Kevin Durant played against the Thunder. In Oklahoma City, Kelsey Powell, KOCO 5 News.